One thing that we've been seeing a lot of in the past few years is docks, and they're everywhere. From docks like the Ugreen one that are made out of solid metal and have pretty good build quality, but they definitely have their uses. A lot of these docks aren't really portable and they're definitely a little bit chunkier to carry around. What happens if you want to get something like a dock but you want more portability to it? A lot of these ones give you good I.O. but they're pretty big to carry around. If you want something similar to a dock but you want something a little bit more portable, well what are you going to do? I personally use these Ioneo docks for most of my devices here at home and including the Ioneo devices and the Loki device. The Ioneo multi-station dock here also works on the new Odin 2 and this is one I usually use. If I'm using my ROG Ally though, I do pick my Ugreen. If you want something more portable and something that you can take with you on the go, what are your different options? Well the best option if you want something that's a little bit more portable, let me show you what that is. If you want something that can fit in your bag and still have good I.O., well these hubs are definitely the way to go. A lot of these hubs do output full 4K 60Hz and we're still getting some good I.O. They also fit really good into your bag if you're taking them with you on the go. Cable Creation did send this over to take a closer look at for review, but they're not seeing this review before it goes up and all opinions are my own. I'm going to give you my honest thoughts to what I think about it. There are a lot of these on Amazon, so what makes this one stand out from the competition? Let's take a closer look at this hub here and see what makes it special. Without further ado, let's just jump right into it. If we look on their website, this 7-in-1 hub goes for 40 US dollars. This price is pretty standard for these USB hubs. We get one HDMI port that goes up to 4K 60Hz. We get two USB 3.0 ports going up to 5 gigabits per second. We get one SD card slot and one micro SD card slot and a USB charging port that goes up to 100 watts. We also get one ethernet jack that goes up to one gigabit per second. They also feature this working well on the Steam Deck and other handhelds so I'm curious to check that out. I definitely don't think this is a bad price for what it is. You can get it in Canada for $62.99, which is a little bit on the expensive side, but it does seem to go on sale here and there. In the States, there's currently a coupon for $40 US dollars with a $7 off coupon. That's a pretty good deal, coming down to about $30 US. This is also the black one here, and I think that looks pretty cool, but the silver looks pretty nice too. If you're in the States, that's not a bad price. Regardless, these do go on sale in Canada here and there, and it's worth keeping your eye open for some of those sales. Hubs and docks in general do pull some of the power when you're charging them. So if you're pulling in 100 watt, you're not going to get the full 100 watt out. However, this is pretty common on most docks and hubs. I do think a good hub is worth it if you get one of good quality. This definitely seems to match the bill in terms of build quality from the pictures we've seen, so I'm curious to see what this is actually like in person. Let's open this up and take a closer look at the hub itself. Let's go ahead and pull this out of the package here. There's a nice little pull tab to get that out. Inside we find a little card that says thank you for buying our product. We also have a card that shows an overview of the hub itself. And inside that we have a nice little carrying package. This is a nice touch, I didn't expect that. This is going to be handy if you stick it in your bag and you have other devices by it. So you, if you don't want to scratch your screen, this is a good way to transport it. And under that we have the hub itself. Well, let's open this up. I'm actually very impressed with the build quality. I've actually never seen this warning on a product before, but I think this is really nice of them to let people know. As long as it doesn't exceed 140 Fahrenheit when fully loaded, it should be safe to use. Let me pull this off so it's a little easier to see. So they're letting us know here that the total output of the two USB A's is 10 watts. One port supports a max of 7.5 watts. If you have an external hard drive that's pulling over 7.5 watts, it might not work correctly on this. And it's also letting us know here that you're going to need a charger of over 40 watts to use the hub correctly. This is very honest and I don't see this on a lot of hubs. Taking a look at the hub itself, well it seems to be really premium. I do like this USB cable, it's braided and it seems very sturdy. The hub itself is a solid aluminum. On the front we have that 4K 60 HDMI out, we have our micro SD card slot and our full SD card slot, we have those two USB A's, and we have the Type-C. 
On the end, we have our gigabit ethernet jack, and there's nothing on the other side. I'm quite happy with the build quality, and overall, this is leaving a really good first impression. I do want to try these ports here to see if they all work correctly, and I do want to see on the temperatures as well to see if this is working correctly under full load. I've connected this INIU 100 watt supported cable to a 100 watt charger, and we're going to connect it to the cable creation hub here. There's no LED notification showing that it's charging, which is absolutely fine. I was going to connect this to my ROG Ally, but my INEO Air seems to be a lot more pickier. It also does show that it's charging, so the cable's definitely working. It's also not warm yet, so that's good to see. Let's connect a few other things to this to see what we can get working. Let's first try a micro SD card. This is an A2 card here. Let's see if that works. As soon as I connected that, that showed up instantly. Let's see if this connection's solid. I'm just going to wiggle it ever so slightly. I don't want to damage the port, obviously. Yeah, that seems to be in there good. I'm not sure what this drive is here, but the only connected drive should be this F drive. Plus I have the internal storage and my micro SD card in the device itself. I was actually looking for that micro SD card and I forgot where it went, so I guess that's where it ended up. Let's run a quick benchmark on that micro SD to see what it gets while it's connected to this dock. This should be sitting at around 80 sequential writes, and I think it was about 90 to 95 sequential reads, so let's take a look. So this is definitely sitting in where it should be. Next up, I want to see if a controller works on here, so I'm going to connect it with my 8-bit Do Ultimate Bluetooth, and we're going to see if this works. I'm also going to connect it using the 2.4 GHz dongle. As you can see, my controller already paired, so it seems to be working. With the controller connected, you can see there's almost no input latency whatsoever. This is basically the same sort of input latency that I'm seeing on my desktop, and this is really good. I have an M2 enclosure here. This is just a simple M2 drive, so I'm going to pull this out and put something faster in. I have this ADATA XPG drive. This is a pretty fast M2 drive, and it's got my game collection on it that I use for testing handhelds. Let's try this on the device itself to see how well this works. I'm also connecting this to the hub via the Sabrent M2 enclosure, but I do want to give this the benefit of the doubt, so to do that, I'm going to plug it in the USB-C port here, so we're going to lose charging functionality, which is absolutely fine. I just want to see if this is going to give us the full speeds. It doesn't look like you can use that Type-C port for data transfer, which is absolutely fine, that wasn't advertised anyways. You could connect an M2 to the hub here if you had a USB-C to USB-A. Unfortunately, all the USB-C to A's I have are pretty slow, so that wouldn't really show good results. I've connected the hub to the IONEO Air. I've also filled all the ports on the hub itself. So we have 100 watt quick charging going in. I have my 2.4 GHz, 8-bit Do Ultimate. I also have my wireless mouse, my Razer Death Adder. I have a micro SD card plugged in, an A21. And we got the HDMI going out, so we've totally loaded it up. Let's take a closer look at the HDMI out itself. So this is the one here, the second display, and the first display is the internal display on the console. So we can go up to 4K, let's try that out. So yeah, it does work with 4K 60Hz. That's awesome to see. If we drop that down to 1440p, we can still get 60Hz. This is at least on the INEO Air Pro, so this might change depending on what console you connect to it. And if we drop this down to 1080p, we can get a max refresh rate of 60 Hz. This adapter is definitely giving us what they advertise. Just for fun, I'm going to go ahead and stress the adapter itself. I'm going to do a very large file here on the micro SD card itself. Then we're going to measure the temperatures to see how it handles the heat. I'm going to let this run and we're going to take a look at the temperatures now. In the center of the hub, we're getting around 35 degrees Celsius or 95 degrees Fahrenheit. If we look over where the power is connected, it's still about 35 degrees, or around 95 degrees Fahrenheit. This is far below the 140 degree Fahrenheit limit, which they said was safe. In fact, the entire card only goes to about 36 degrees Celsius at most. This might change if you reuse this for long periods of time, but for the most part, this has been on there for a good while, and we're not even going over 36 degrees Celsius. For my American friends, this is about 96 degrees Fahrenheit. This hub is doing a remarkable job at keeping cool. I'm already really impressed with this. We can overload all these ports and it's keeping the temperature relatively cool. 
The build quality is also excellent, and I love this braided cable here. The connection also feels very sturdy into the console itself, and it doesn't lose connection if we wiggle it around slightly. This also seems really quick for connecting to HDMI. As soon as I plug this in, that's not bad. Most HDMIs take a couple seconds, so this is pretty much within where we're expecting it to be. If you're in the market for a good USB-C hub, I definitely think this one has my seal of approval. Good job cable creation. So what about a more powerful device like the ROG Ally that depends heavily on the charger itself to go up to 30 watts? Can we get any sort of better resolution scaling with this device? Let's check it out. I've gone ahead and plugged that in. We indeed are getting the 30 watt full turbo charging. We can get a full 4K 60Hz on this one as well. Let's drop that down to 1440p. So unfortunately I can't get 1440p 144Hz. But I didn't expect that to work anyways. What if we drop this down to 1080p? If we drop this down to 1080p, can we bump this up anymore? Let's try 120Hz. So 120Hz doesn't seem to work either. This wasn't officially supported anyways, but I did want to see if it worked just for the fun of it. Regardless, it does seem to work at 4K, 1440p, and 1080p very well. And we are getting that full 60Hz. If you look in the display options here, we have 8-bit color. We can't go up to 10-bit color either, so it's maxing out at 8-bit color. But this is using full RGB output as well, so you're getting some really good color. It's a shame it doesn't support 120 at 1080, but that doesn't really seem to matter. Most people are probably going to connect this to their TV, so 4K 60 is kind of where it's going to sit for most people. This has been connected to the ROG Ally for a while, but we're sitting only at 35 degrees Celsius, or 95 degrees Fahrenheit. We're still far below that temperature limit that they are advertising. I also want to try this with the Odin 2, and the HDMI output seems to be working well at 4K 60. I've given this a test for a good while now, and it does seem to be working as advertised. I'm pretty happy with this, and I think the build quality is excellent. If you're in the market for a good USB hub, I do think that this is worth considering. Another thing that I really like about this is how flexible the braided cable is, and it seems very strong. If you're looking for a good USB hub, I definitely recommend checking this one out. If you have any questions regarding the Cable Creation 7-in-1 hub, let me know in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos, and as always, thanks for watching.